All right. Um, well, in the first part, we uh, downloaded the source through a subversion. We compiled it. We installed code blocks. We installed all the dependencies. We uh, compiled from code blocks, and we got it all up and running. Now let's do something useful. Um, but first, I'll show you the thing I'd like to patch. Um, okay, from the home directory, let's go into the Blender SVN directory and then to code blocks. In code blocks, we have the bin directory where containing our compiled Blender. So let's execute Blender. Of course, it'll open in my second screen. So let's move it here. Here we are. Alright. Okay, I've prepared a little uh, blend file to show you what the problem is. Okay, just a simple cube, it has a texture. Um, I mean, Blender game mode. And I've attached a Python controller to this cube. And this is the logic. Alright, uh, logic expand part is actually not necessary, I think. So let's remove that. Um, Alright, so movies is just a string pointing at def video 0 uh, and texture video ffmpeg should uh, use my webcam device as a texture for the cube. Right, so 0 just means we're capturing 15 frame rate, 320 to 40 is the resolution. So, well, that's it. This from documentation, this should work. If I uh, run it, nothing works. And I look at the engine output. There is no error whatsoever, so well, everything seems fine, but only I'm not seeing the result I would like to have. Okay, what's actually going on? Um, there's nothing wrong with the uh, with this uh, script, but let's close it and let's open up code blocks. Um, code blocks. And blender. Okay, this could take a while because it will have to load all the files again. All right, code blocks has loaded. Okay, let's go into sources, into Blender, source, game engine, and here's the video texture directory, and in the end, video ffmpeg. Oh, I already had it open. No, well, no worries. Alright, this is the original uh, code. Let's see what it does. Um, I have to search myself a bit. Alright, so here we have the function OpenCam. And it says Open Video Capture Device. So it should be somewhere in here, we should know what it's doing. Um, la la la, so if you look here, this is defined for Windows. Well, we're not on Windows, so we should be in the else block. So this here should somewhere state what's going on. All right, and here it says if the file contains 1394, it should. Well, it didn't because we had the dev video zero device. Else, have a find input format video for Linux. So if we do not have uh, a file, a string containing 1394, which is the digital video device, FireWire, it automatically goes to video for Linux. But I'm not using video for Linux because that's a bit old and I should actually use video for Linux too. I could just change this and recompile again. Alright, I compiled Blender again, this time with this new uh, Video for Linux 2 device. Let's see if that makes any difference. Oh, again, I did not save this, so let's do this. Okay. Hey, now you can see, hey, it is working. So, yeah show you yeah that's me we actually have a webcam image now so this is the problem the video for Linux uh, uh, format is hard-coded into the blender source and this is really not good uh, good practice 
So I'm suggesting to patch this. So let's kill this. Let's create an extra para parameter parameter to uh, add the format to this uh, string. I could just say it like this video for Linux 2. That should be great because for the Windows people, I've already seen in the code that it's hard coded to video for Windows capture. And I think most webcams on Windows nowadays are direct show. I'm not sure, I don't use Windows, but so this could be very useful for the Windows people as well. So if we could just create this extra parameter, um, yeah. That should really help. Okay, let's do it. So, I'm quitting. So, setting this for video for Linux 2 was successful. Now we have to make this more optional and more flexible. So, let's get into the video uh, FFmpeg header file. Uh, let's see. And here we have the init params which has a width height rate pool image so and here we'll add an optional parameter which is just a string called uh, let's call it format and set it by default to null right so that's how we can set it now we need to save it inside the class and here are the capture rate and stuff so let's duplicate like that and set capture format of capture and capture format and it's not a float it's a character Pointer. Right, I think that's all we have to do in this class. Um, yo. Right. Now, inside uh, this open cam, we actually we should first fix the init params function. Whoop, 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 whoop. Where is it? stream here it is bool image uh, char uh, format I said format yeah that's it let's place it in its container and kept format is format oops get semicolon Right, that's it. Now we only need to fix up the open cam function because that's the only one which will be using this. Uh, well, first we'll have the. This is the old code. I don't want to change the old code, so just after this mem set, I'm going to say if capture format uh, equals null, so it's not set, then do the old code. And the old code is exactly this, so let's just cut that and paste it in here and indent it a bit so it looks nice. Actually, precompiler headers we're not indenting. So, if we don't set the capture format, um, we'll just run the old code. Oh, it was actually m underscore capture format right so old code and this was inside this if statement so we can then how do you say else and here we will run the new code and we only have to say now we just have to find out if ffmpeg supports this new format and that's very simple to do because 
we can just say input format is I'm just copying this from the old code actually I'll show you um, input format is in here it says input format is and it's forced into video for Linux 2 and we're just going to change that into M capture format is that correct? I think it is and well this line I don't really don't know why they did it like this but they're copying the the file name to a string called file and they are doing that and where exactly We can just copy this and put that there. So that's all, I reckon. And outside this um, line, here it says it, it's, it's testing the input format. Actually, we should be able to remove that line because I, mean, I want to test this one as well. So we're doing that double now. Um, I don't think that's really nice. However, I don't see that there's a problem with that. Let's also output an error just to know that if something goes wrong, uh, if something goes wrong, we'll know about it. This command is useless because we can supply it with any format now. Doesn't need to be supported by FFmpeg. Uh, right, so if it's not supported, it will just return and do nothing. Right, um, do we need to change more? Because after this, we just set it. Oh, well, oh, I won't do this twice because it, if it fails here, it will return anyway. So it's already gone then. So no worries there. Uh, so this is old code again, setting capture frame rate, and now it's opening the stream. Blah de blah. Okay, I think this should work. But since we are uh, using Python code in uh, Blender, we um, have to change the Python code as well. well. The Python code is all in the bottom, I already noticed. I think this is f image ffmpeg. It's not. No, right? I should get video ffmpeg. And Here it is. And again, we say all the optional, all the parameters, and it's doing something. Capture format we're going to add only if capture is greater than zero. So again, we're using char app format, and we set it to null by default. So in here we have a array. Oh yeah, this is the. Oh, it's here saving all the optional parameters, so we have to add format here as well. So we have a format option, and we need to tell Python parser about it. Okay, this is a really strange thing because, well, it just matches. Uh, arguments or parameters to certain optional or obligated uh, parameters so the first the file name is obligated so and it's a string and everything behind this uh, line is optional so we'll add an optional string called format um, yep I 
actually it should be format I'm going to call this capture capture format just to make it capture format I'm getting lost now capture format and should I'm just changing that to make it more clear because this one is going into the capture MT format right this one is this one and this is just a Python uh, option right so what then what then okay um, init video, get video, okay, now it's setting the init parameters function and we've just changed that because we added the, uh, the capture format however if you noticed it's only setting width, height and rate while in the function itself, let's scroll a bit up Oh man, yep. you will notice the bool option, bool image, char format is what we added, so they're not actually setting that one, it's only already optional and by default it was, uh, what was it again, and the bool option was false, so we have to add that one as well, otherwise we'll get really strange results. Um, so, we'll just set it to false and then we'll set the capture format. Capture I think that's it. Um, well, I think we've patched the Python code now as well. Right, let's compile. Compiled, Lender is running again, and now we can open up this uh, Python script we had before. Uh, I'll just leave the logic part there. Uh, so we're not changing anything to the old code now, and it should still work because, like before, we if we said we were not providing a format, um, it will just run the old code. So let's see. Yep, still working. But now we have an extra option. We can set the format. Video for Linux 2. And if we've done this correctly, this should work as well. Um, yeah. Ta -da. So now you can just set the format to whatever you want. If I would say it, put it back to video for Linux, like it was hard coded in the original code, it won't work. You see? And actually, it should display on the terminal now. Video for Linux not supported. So I don't have any video for Linux devices. Everything is Linux for video for Linux too by now. So quite. Now you might think we would be ready now, but um, there's one more important thing to do, and that's uh, tell the world about this new option. And usually that goes through documentation. Right, I'm just quitting. Alright, so 
I'm not gonna change anything to the source anymore. Actually, I am because I don't know. Just let leave it to Video for Linux 2 because I think most devices nowadays use Video for Linux 2. I've actually never used Video for Linux 1. Um, we need to change the documentation, and documentation isn't uh, added to. Uh, the code box project normally, so I, I would like to add it. Um, so let's add files recursively. Okay, let's go into Blender directory, and there here is the doc directory, and I'm going to change the Python RB. I think I'll just add the whole folder. What the hell? So now it gives me an option option to select files. That's when it's in there. Oh, that's not too much, not too bad. Select all. I'm asking to which build. I don't know, just whatever. Okay, uh, it should be added somewhere. Render doc Python API. Okay, and we have the texture. And I just want to open it inside the code box editor. I'm going to close these two because I'm not going to use them anymore. All right, so this is the documentation you'll find on the on the on the wiki. And it's uh, generated automatically, and it's actually nice to tell uh, other people about new options. So, well, you saw in the in the blend in the Blender example that we're actually calling video ffmpeg with the file capture uh, rate width and height, and we're just going to add uh, the format to this. So format and by default, it's nothing, eh? So let's quote it like that. I think that's enough. I think it would be nice to just add some more explanation about everything here. So I already did that before, so let's get it from a div file. As you can see here, I'm just. Uh, Adding more uh, documentation about what all the extra, all the parameters in the function are. So, and that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. It would be nice to also um, give some example code. I don't have the examples in here. But if you look in the doc directory, you also find uh, 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 an examples folder, which uh, yeah just explains how to use uh, the code. You can add some uh, more documentation there as well, some example code of how to do things. And uh, for this, I'll just leave it here. Um, there's one more thing I would like to mention. Uh, well, let me just show it. Uh, let me just close code blocks for now. No, no, I'm not going to close code blocks. Just put it in the background. Um, let's go to the Blender uh, source. And since we are using Subversion, I could just now uh, show the status of... As you can see, I'm doing SVN status, and it says I've modified video FFmpeg, and I've modified video uh, the texture 
be the BG module texture documentation. If I just do SVN diff, show the difference, it will show me what I changed. And I forgot to tell you something about code blocks and the blender source, which is important for this. Is uh, now it's only showing me what I've changed in the lines. But actually, you have to go to settings and to the editor. And here in general settings, by default, strip trailing blanks is on. You have to switch that to off, otherwise, um, yeah, all the blank lines are changed, and you'll end up seeing that in your uh, SVN diff command. And uh, it's a bit, it's not so handy. If you want to submit a patch to Blender, you uh, want to have a clean diff not showing differences in, in empty uh, lines so just just switch that off uh, that really makes a change right so i'm closing uh, blender uh code box sorry and yes i want to save the project oh it's already also asking change the default view or well, whatever I don't care just save it and in here you can see what I've changed if you actually uh, want to submit a patch always do it from the root uh, of the blender source don't go into uh, a directory like this source game engine video texture and do svn diff because you've only changed the files in that uh, directory and submit submit, submit this as a, as a patch always do it from the root so this is the root svn div it will just show everything you've changed not only the changes in a certain directory all right i think this concludes uh, this tutorial i hope you found it useful and hopefully you'll dive into the source as well so yeah thanks thanks for watching